there was a debacle last week with her tickets for the Eras Tour. Can you give us a brief overview of that? Sure. Uh, it was the biggest story in my world in that I didn't even make the wait list. I was uh, on the on the wait list for the excuse me, I was on the wait list for the presale, which is just embarrassing. And Ticketmaster couldn't handle the traffic. It was just a mess. If you were on social media, your feed was overwhelmed by people complaining about how they were in the queue and got tossed out or they couldn't get through and all these bots were buying tickets and then you'd find them for a hundred thousand dollars a show on the secondary market at which point uh ticketmaster just said all right we're going to hold the regular sale of this we need to pause and reflect yeah the swifties were really vocal about their anger towards that whole situation so ticketmaster did give people like you said those pre-sale codes what happened how could they not control this they were just too many of them, and they, and they got slammed by bots. I believe I read somewhere it was four times as much traffic as they've ever seen before. Um, you know, Taylor, Taylor Swift's really popular. And apparently, I think it was, she'd have to like play 900 consecutive stadium tours to cover all the demand that they've seen so far, which is a pretty ambitious touring schedule. And the outrage even reached Congress. There were some congressional responses between Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, David Cicilline, Amy Klobuchar. What has the congressional response been? So this is one of those stories that Congress loves and that they get to position themselves as fighting on behalf of, of, the, of the Taylor Swift fans. I mean, who's not going to like that? And it's going to be a tough one to push back against because you don't want to be seen as anti-Taylor Swift. I mean, that's that's really not the good play, you know. Even if these Congress people don't particularly care about her, a lot of them have kids who do. Um, so they are they were calling for or they actually just announced today that there will be hearings into uh, what happened with Ticketmaster. The, the issue is when they okayed the merger between Live Nation and Ticketmaster, which were two competitors. Uh, the, the argument was that they should not have been allowed to merge, that it was violated an anti, anti, um, antitrust laws. It got okayed anyways. And now we have a situation like what we saw last week. So do you, is this a monopoly? Some representatives outright called it that on social media. Yeah, I mean, there's a good argument that it is. And, and we'll see. You know, it, Congress and, and the Judiciary Department have been very reluctant to ban sort of ban mergers from, uh, from block mergers from being monopolies. You, you don't see it all that often, most notably with uh, T-Mobile and Sprint. When they merged a few years back, there was a big pushback against that being allowed that you you know, we were going down to just three major carriers at that point, and it, it went through without a problem. So what, what really interests me with this is that Ticketmaster, or Live Nation rather, the, the parent company of Ticketmaster, has a pack, but it's been very quiet in that they have uh, collected $86,000 from senior employ senior staff of Live Nation, but their, uh, their disbursements is a blank space. They have not reported making any disbursements whatsoever yet. So it'll be very interesting to see if that changes. Um, and as individuals, the senior employees have spent $137,000 on campaign donations. And what I, really interesting is most of that, or the largest re recipient was John Ossoff of Georgia. He is on the subcommittee that is gonna be holding the hearings. So, We'll see what happens there. We'll see if they start spending, if the PAC starts spending more money. They did not get back to an inquiry, but it was really interesting that they supported him to such an extent since he wasn't even in cycle. Yeah. So why launch a PAC if you're not going to give any money? Rainy day fund. You know, maybe they decided they didn't need it now, hold their powder for this election. But, you know, there's a great time to start uh, Start start making some contributions, and that's when you're going to be called in before a congressional panel for a hearing. So I am, uh, you know, monitoring that, and we're going to see if, uh, if you know, if they're able to, uh, if they start making spending some money. And why do you think that Live Nation staffers are giving to Democrats more than Republicans? Uh, they're probably the ones who are most likely to be uh, arguing about antitrust. You know, Republicans are generally seen as pro business, pro big business. And Democrats are the ones who are most likely to be portrayed as against that. So makes a good point, you know, not necessarily to give money to your to your friends, but give people to people, uh, lawmakers who might be your critics. That's a good point. Is that the same point why you reported that the one corporate con contribution Live Nation made itself was eight thousand seven hundred dollars to the 2016 host committee for the Democratic National Convention? It could be. Obviously, that was several years ago. 
Uh, it could also be just that somebody there had a connection to Philadelphia. You know, one of the seniors, senior leaders there had it and viewed it not necessarily as a political donation, but something that was going to be good for their home city. Um, said I reached out. They didn't get back to me on that one. But that, that really was an interesting donation to be like their one and only, the company's one and only direct contribution.